So good morning. Good morning. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to the Foundation's 2016 Leadership Summit. And I thank you for your time and your effort and your wisdom being here today. My name is Jameson Hoff. I hope you'll call me Jamie. And I'm a member of the Nashua Region Advisory Board. I also served on this year's Leadership Summit Planning Committee, a group that worked on your behalf to help plan this year's event. Your entire planning team is here today and I'd like to recognize them, including our wonderful staff, by asking them to please stand among you. <laughs> Thank you, my dear colleagues, for your excellent work together. Those of you that are new to the Leadership Summit, it is the time once a year when the Foundation's Board of Directors, the eight regional advisory boards, our outstanding staff, and our important visitors all gather together to discuss issues that are critical to the people of New Hampshire and what we can do collectively to address them. When your planning committee met earlier this year, to choose today's topic, our task was easy because the issue was so clear. It is the growing opportunity gap among New Hampshire's kids and what the foundation is doing to address that. Richard Reeves, our esteemed invited speaker, is also here for you today to help put our work into national context. I keep at home a tiny little handmade sign that helps me make choices. And on it are just four little words, the next right thing. I'll come back to that in just a minute. The now comprehensive collection of research evidence has me convinced that the opportunity gap is real. And when a problem becomes real, I often have that first survival reaction as a mom and as a one day grandma about any threat to my family's future. So for me, this is partly a personal issue as a starting point. And I have no doubt that most of you can react to a personal threat to your family's future. But, of course, the opportunity gap is a much bigger problem than any one family, mine or yours. And the need to address the opportunity gap for all our kids is now the next right thing. The great news is that this is a solvable problem. If you doubt for a moment that we can really change the future shape of that opportunity gap. Just remember how we used to think about smoking as cool or drunk driving as regrettable but nearly normal. We don't accept any of that anymore because our great ship of culture actually and measurably changed course. We've actually eradicated major diseases like polio and smallpox. And I know we can succeed in eradicating this pernicious opportunity gap that threatens New Hampshire's children, our children, and their shared future. We have such enormous power when we work together to change course. One person who knows how that works is Maureen Beauregard, president of Families in Transition and a member of the Foundation's Board of Directors. Maureen, an honor to invite you. Good morning, everyone. 
Um, just as an aside, I have two signs on my conference desk. One says, uh, wag more, bark less. And the other, the other is, what if we just acted like everything was easy? Those are my, the two things that I, that I see every day in my office. So I'm president of Families in Transition, and at FIT, we provide housing and services to the homeless in Manchester, Concord, Dover. And if we can get, can get out of Superior Court in, uh, up in Carroll County, we will be doing it in Wolfboro. And uh, we have the capacity to provide housing and services to 200 families with children as well as individuals each, each night. And our housing ranges from like uh, emergency shelter to uh, transitional housing where people stay for uh, a couple of years to permanent supportive housing to folks who need help forever. And, uh, and it's our pleasure to do that. Um, I personally feel blessed uh, to know and work with these families. I get to see them because they're running up and down the hallway and in the apartment above my office, and there's nothing I love better. Um, the thing that has kept me focused and energized over all these years is that running of feet over my head. Um, when I hear those kids, um, I want to get out of bed every morning, and I really want to get to work because these kids truly are our biggest hope, and I just know that to the core of my being. I remember when I started Families in Transition 25 years ago, and we had five units of housing, and there were 50, 50 women with children who needed help, and I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so terrible. What am I going to do? Uh, last year, we had families with children as well as individuals um, who called us for some sort of housing emergency. They needed help. It was 5,000 individuals, and that's one organization in Manchester, New Hampshire. The really big story there is that half of them are kids. Half of them are kids. Um, you know, and when I look at that number, that's like as big as the town I grew up in. So I can go back home, and I can look at this town and say, what if everybody left? That's the impact that these kids are having on our towns and all over the state. Um, we see that the number of poor children is rising, just like from the, the report that, uh, that you all have out. And not only is the number rising, but the issues are so much more complex. And there are so many more families with all of these complex issues. It used to be we'd have a few, now there are a lot. Um, our family shelter in Manchester is located probably if not the most difficult neighborhood in New Hampshire, one of the most difficult neighborhoods. You're agreeing, you've been there. And, um, and it's absolutely where we need to be. And I see the issues of New Hampshire Tomorrow that are listed in the New Hampshire Tomorrow report playing out on a daily basis. You see it, Mayor Lozo. And the um, opioid epidemic alone is absolutely testing the mettle of all of our programs, not just families in transition. I have never seen anything like it, and I've been doing this for 25 years. But thanks to the foundation, um, we've not only strengthened our substance use disorder program, but we're doubling capacity, and we're re including recovery housing. And that's because of the connection we have to UTAM. Not only is not just about the money, money's awesome, um, but it's also about the advocacy and the connections and doing this together. So thank you. You know what I'm talking about. You really helped us out lately, and I can't thank you enough. Um, when I look at our programs, I always look through the eyes of a child, the experience of a child, and I say, would a child be safe here? Would a child be proud to live here? Will this help to stabilize and help the child later? I'm totally serious. This is exactly what I do, down to the color of the house. The last one was yellow. Um, and I have to say that all of us are bringing our histories to this problem, everybody in this room, and I'm no different. And um, my siblings and I were these kids. And uh, the memories of this are fresh for me, even though it's 48 years ago. And the slide of my family into our eventual breakup, uh, doing time in foster care, moving from place to place, the hunger, the violence. Um, poverty is hard on a kid. And there are some things that you simply can't unremember. Um, and that's really important to know. But despite my yesterday and what I see today, I do not want you to feel helpless. Jamie, you are absolutely right. Do not feel helpless because I know we can turn this around because I've experienced it from the other side and I see hope on a daily basis. For me, it was Head Start. Donna, you guys have a Head Start program and you're co-located in our family shelter. 
I love Head Start. Um, and, um, you know, it was Head Start. It was Tori from, um, it was called the STAR program, and uh, worked with underprivileged kids like me and kind of corralled me and got me to apply to UNH, and ta-da, here I am at Families in Transition. I don't know how that happened. Um, and then it was my community, my school, my high school. Oh, my gosh, they, they, I just loved them. Um, and then it was the little country store in my town. Uh, they helped look after me and made sure that I was okay later on. Um, it all, it takes all of us. It takes money, but it also takes that interconnectedness and that, and that sense of knowing that we're all in this together. Um, the foundation is investing in New Hampshire tomorrow with the focus on kids and their families. Uh, they're lassoing all these key issues that ch absolutely, 100%, change the trajectory of a kid's life. You are making it happen. And when I look at the kids, I, I think about, you know, like when you're in the eye doctor and they keep switching it until you can actually see out of the thing, and they're like, oh, you need, bi you, you need bifocals, Maureen. Well, that's kind of, that's kind of what we need to do. Uh, at the foundation and in our communities, keep switching that lens until you see it through the eyes of a child. And once you see everything through the eyes of a child, it really changes how we live our lives. It changes how I live my life. And um, the following is a quote from, from you, Mr. Ober. And it says, all of New Hampshire's kids deserve the opportunity to reach their potential. But right now, only some get that chance. Together, we can do something about this. While these issues are complex, there is a solution. And I think the key word in your quote, Dick, is together.